Good morning. Um, mm. It's wicked cold. And they're calling for snow on Wednesday. And I am not ready. Um, so, today's story time and Moonstone. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, I have a horrible light. Um, I don't know if I can lighten it up or not. And if I... If I open the blind, my camera or my phone like goes ridiculously losing its mind trying to find where it needs to focus. So this is what we're dealing with today. So it looks like maybe it loses it. Oh, let's play this game. <laughs> um, today I'm gonna talk about Moonstone. This is um, this is a typical example of a tumbled moonstone. Um, and they'll be in this color, which is called gray, uh, or you might have a, a light pink one, which is the peach. Um, then there's jewelry quality. And the jewelry quality is absolutely stunning. I love it. I have some. I wanted to show you an example of the jewelry quality of Moonstone. Um, and because my house is tore up from the floor up, I can't find anything. Most of the time it's white and it has like a, um, I don't know, a, an iridescence about it. Uh, I have a blue one and I have white ones. Um, I love them. Oh my God, I love Moonstone. Yes, Tish, you love them all. Yes, I do. Um, Moonstone has a very special place in my heart. Um, like they all do. So, Moonstone. Um, Moonstone is your new beginnings. Um, Moonstone is also, it's a feminine stone. It's a nurturing, selfless stone. It's a stone of intuition. Um, it's a success stone for business. Um, oh, I love a Moonstone. I wish I could catch this. It has a fire that, that, that iridescence, even in these really low grade pieces, you'll catch it every once in a while. And I just, I can't help myself. And to sit and flip it in that little beam of sun that's coming in the window. Um, it's a stone for abundance and love and hope. Um, for inner growth and strength. Um, it's a traveler stone. I've been about stones my whole life. So, uh, I mean, as a kid, I was picking up stones and I had them in my pocket. I was always, you know, bringing stones home and putting them on my nightstand. If we would go on vacation, I would pick up rocks. And I would bring home a rock from wherever we went on vacation. Um, and Lee has picked up the same um, habit. Uh, because she would go on vacation. If she would go on vacation with grandma as a kid, she would bring me a rock from everywhere. And I have a mason jar of rocks from vacation. I don't know where they, some from the side of the road, some from like by a lake or, or whatever. And I don't know where they're from. I just know that she brought them home to me because it, it, she knew I loved rocks and it was exciting to her to find the perfect rock for the representation of that. Uh, vacation that she went on and it's and I, I treasure I treasure those rocks and Moonstone like I didn't even know I I was so you know like the the fluorite so we talked about the fluorite and how much I love the fluorite and was so attracted to fluorite because of Illinois well then in the <clears throat> I guess it would be late 80s early 90s uh, in the neighboring town Carbondale, there was this little hippie witchy store. And me and Lee would go down there and we loved it. And Sarah was the proprietor. And there was incense and candles and stone formations and um, books, tarot cards and... Her, Sarah's boyfriend made jewelry and metal smithing and wire wrapping and she had a jewelry case of all of these talismans that he made out of all of these different crystals and I would look at them and I would say oh my gosh I'm gonna do this 
he was a huge inspiration for me um, as far as my wire wrapping and my jewelry making he was a huge influence um, and I just I, because they would be like these big beautiful silver pieces and they would be you know wire wrapped and have six or seven stones in them or they would he would be this huge pendant that would be all silver and there would be little stones mounted you know in it and I remember looking at them I was like oh I wanted one so bad I wanted one so bad and they were like 35 and 40 dollars back in 1990 I would buy I would buy my incense there. Um, <clears throat> she had sandalwood and patchouli and uh, frankincense and myrrh and just all of these earthy smells that I just loved so much. And so I would go down there and I would buy my my incense and Lee would go with me and we would just look at books and poke around and it was just just this awesome little store. And Lee would be like, we're going to go see Sarah. <laughs> yes, yeah, let's go see Sarah. And she would talk to us. So we would just go and visit. And I would always make sure, even if it was a dime, that's all her incense was, was a dime. Uh, even if it was a dime, I always I always bought something because I was taking up her time. Um, and, oh, there's fire in this one. Oop, sidetrack. So every time you bought something, she had a she had a bowl of tumbled stones. So every time you bought something, she would say, take a stone as a gift. And so every time I reached in there, every time I pulled out a moonstone, every time. Uh, and the, I still have one. It's a small square one that I keep saying that I'm gonna wrap, which I can't find. Uh, and I will. I found these digging around. I found my eye so every time I pulled the, it didn't it didn't matter whether I closed my eyes and drew or I reached in and drew. I picked a moonstone every time. Um, so she started to refer to me as moonstone. I would walk in and she'd go, "There's my moonstone." Um, then she told me I was I was quite heavy. Um, then, and so she she told me I had made some reference about weight loss or blah 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 and uh she said you always pick a moonstone it's a weight loss stone and so during the waning moon um put the moonstone in your your right hand um and pass it across your body until you get to your left hand and you should stand in front of your mirror naked and look at yourself um, so you can visualize yourself and how you want yourself to be and I did it it was uncomfortable it really was uncomfortable um, but I put it in my right hand on the waning moon and I started here and I looked at myself and I envisioned like more definition and I envisioned more definition and I passed it all the way down my body around my stomach around my hips my thighs my inner thighs to my feet and then I brought it back up my body and across my head and I gave it to my left hand and, and I did the same thing just envisioning and then I brought it back to myself and then I always carried it with me um, and I did that on the waning moon and envisioned not to be skinty um, but just envisioned, I didn't need to carry all that weight. So, I didn't see her for several months uh, due to, uh, you know, work or, you know, whatever. Um, we made it, finally made it back down to Carbondale one day. Me and Lee went back down and popped in and I picked up some incense. She went, oh my God, Moonstone. And I was like, hey, how you doing? She said, how much weight have you lost? I lost 60 pounds. A little tangible here, right? So, was it my was it my 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 ritual that I did, or, or my thought process, my spell that I said, uh, or was it my little tangible reminder in my pocket that every time I went to make an unhealthy choice, food-wise, um, I remembered 
my moonstone, I remembered my my goal um, as far as I wanted to lose some weight and uh, and eat healthier, make healthier choices. And um, so she was so excited. She was so excited. Um, and then it wasn't wasn't long after that. Um, we would go down, there would be a sign in the store that she wasn't open or that she had changed her hours or so on and so forth. And then we lost track of Sarah. We heard rumor that she had opened up in the, the little hippie town just uh, just south of Carbondale called Macanda. We had heard she had opened up her shop down there because Carbondale in the, in the late 80s, early 90s was just not ready for that form of spiritualism that strayed away from the good old Southern Baptist. Um, to be quite honest, even though it was a great little, it was a great little hippie town, it's a college town. Uh, so with a college town, you get a lot of diversity most times. Uh, they still just weren't ready. And uh, I was, I was blessed to have her in my life for that little bit of time. And still, we still talk about Sarah. I got a, um, text from Lee just a few weeks ago and where she lives, the town that she lives in, somebody's opening up a spiritual shop downtown on their little main street and she sent me a picture of their little storefront window with their amethyst and their sign and she's like, oh my god mom, I looked in the window and it, it looks like Sarah's. So Sarah, if you're, wherever you are, you, we're still here and we still think about you and you impacted our life and you inspired our lives. And we love you still dearly. And that's my story of Sarah, who we still adore. And every time I see a moonstone, I think of her. And so, uh, just so you guys know, um, the waning moon was the first of the month. I lost four pounds. So remember, be peaceful. Be kind.